All good, uh, good evening for you, and this is uh, good morning for me. Uh, my name is uh, Jim, I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte in this uh, North Carolina in the U.S. Um, I'm an IEEE uh, director. I sit on the board of directors and be your guest lecturer today and for a, another few uh, Wednesdays coming up. Specific uh, discussion is going to be about, about embeddings, market trends, and uh, the groundwork for what's important about, about uh, systems, at least with respect of what you should be learning and what will be valuable for in the industry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a uh, uh, from the 2015 market survey, there was not a survey done in 2016, and they're just right now collecting data in 2017. And so there will be some additional uh, uh, more data and more information available at uh, later in the year when they come out with the 2017 uh, market study. So with our do, let's take a look at the uh, market study. <clears throat> this way, an organization that uh, has really been nope. okay. uh, involved in the embedded systems field, specifically, uh, they have been publishers for uh, Embedded Systems Magazine, EDN, uh, Double Times, and this organization. Uh, survey and then makes it readily available for everybody in the embedded system. Field. But it, one of the important aspects of this is is to take at uh, what is data and why they do this. Do uh, a little bit of, of uh, uh, information about uh, how many people have filled it out when the uh, survey was conducted. Uh, see the survey was conducted. Conducted over the course of uh, approximately two months in uh, uh, in uh, um, early 2015, but it was done worldwide. And so the data that you're going to see includes um, developing embedded systems in India, as well as China, as well as Asia, press Asia, and uh, Europe, and, and North America. <clears throat> All of the uh, uh, the sources of all the information for the uh, people participated in the survey. You can see that yeah, thirty percent were in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, only two in Latin America, Australia, East Africa. Uh, few from Europe, and now quite a few from Asia. So this uh, is 12% of all of the uh, responses were from Asia in the previous one and, and have increased. That will show uh, a change in, in, for example, the type of microprocessor that uh, uh, people use. The is that clearly the people who respond to this are actually developing embedded systems. They're not faculty. They're not, not uh, actually creating embedded systems. Uh, for <clears throat> they, uh, 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 they're they're looking into a little bit more breakdown. As you can see, eight percent of this survey was uh, done from Indian engineers, nine percent from Chinese engineers, and uh, of course, he's still from the United States. Get uh, who developed systems? Uh, it's big, huge companies uh, like your IBMs and your uh, uh, systems and, and um, who are developing embedded systems. But uh, predominantly, if you look at the different types of uh, companies, near half of the uh, people who are developing embedded systems were for companies of 500 people and under. Uh, 
Uh, a lot of who are developing embedded systems for small, small um, person companies that niche product that are, are doing it as, uh, uh, either tractor or as uh, uh, an entrepreneur starting out in the new world. Let me give you an example. There's a near me here in North Carolina called Halo. Halo is a 20 person company uh, made up of quite a few of uh, students who have taken embedded systems classes and been through my uh, uh, been university, in a couple of uh, uh, math students who came from India, they are being smoke detector products that are in our local hardware stores. Um, quite a lot of sales hardware stores, and a relatively small company and. But their their processor or their application only for uh, uh, in, in this 25 U.S. dollars, uh, which is a large uh, price for a device of their type. And what is uh, organizations again? This is this is asking people who are uh, taking the survey. What is your organization's primary business activity? Engineering, science, and research. Uh, you can you can look at all those numbers there. Manufacturing processes, consumer electronics, even even into uh, government, military, uh, telecom, etc. But really more interesting is what types of applications that they're developing embedded systems for. So you look at this, uh, trolls, in other words, uh, some embedded system that is used for perhaps seeing, measuring, controlling, uh, and processes are at least a third of the people. And it really doesn't matter from which year uh, this is surveyed from. It, it's consistent, including that uh, there's a lot more people from Asia involved in the survey. And it looks in like, uh, controls and maybe not so, so much consumer electronics, but that uh, all the other uh, devices. Now, notice this doesn't add up to, to uh, one because very often people are doing multiple projects or it has multiple applications. But this idea of, of the types of fields that you can if you're developing embedded systems. Internet things is. Uh, just started to be measured in 2014, and uh, I would suspect that this year, when when, when the survey completed, you're going to see a lot more people identifying an Internet of Things application because that buzz. And you play in your organization's embedded systems project. This is asking the people who are participating in the uh, uh, say. Are they an engineer or are they a manager? And as you can see here, here um, about 50 are involved in the engineering, including firmware, software engineer, hardware and system level or, or test. Um, those who are in management. Notice that uh, predominantly, uh, you see people are involved in project management. And sometimes they'll have multiple uh, tasks. There are also, um, it looks like here, students or educators. I actually participated in the survey, um, and I included the pictures that we were in the uh, in the realm, and so I will be included in those uh, three percent. So that's the, uh, from the survey. What is your job job function? A lot of People have a lot of different jobs, and that's not unusual if you're working at its systems, because very often you're working with both the hardware and the software. It's the number one uh, uh, task that they're doing. They're doing hardware and software integration, which means that an embedded systems engineer needs to understand both hardware and software concepts. Concepts like <coughs> Uh, the specific software engineering processes that one would follow, and hard concepts 
like to uh, how do you interface memory with uh, with a process, or to uh, how would you control a motor with your uh, microprocessor? <clears throat> of course, everyone's working with uh, right, people are working with firmware uh, as well as bugging, and you can see all the different tasks there. A lot of people are working on project management with things that uh, uh, I was working for Ericsson in, uh, in the U.S. That, that even was a test engineer at one point and a software developer at another. Um, I was uh, the project manager for the uh, small project as well. And with that project, I was uh, happy sure that all the other developers in the project were doing their job. And then so had a technical job as well. So very well. Uh, and this uh, would be a bit of advice for all of you there too. Is you also have a good uh, background in the hard software as well as the skills, project management, how to use a workaround structure, and uh, how to uh, how to track the progress of your product. If you know that there's a, uh, another uh, description, how old are the people who are uh, working at system? And if it's to school, uh, that says the average age is, is, uh, is 42 years old of those working in embedded systems. So now that uh, how people develop embedded systems and look at some of their design environments as well as um, some of the they work on where are they going to. So this is pretty distant if you look at it over the years. An embedded systems project is brand new to the world. In other words, what we call a project from scratch or an upgrade or improvement of a Previously designed product, and much not quite half, but, but there's a lot of work out there that will be taking an existing product, say the iPhone five, and they making modifications to it to come out with the iPhone six. And so, uh, while there's work that do, uh, of it is just modifications, it's not just code modifications. No hardware involved. Got one revision to the next. <clears throat> when you're creating or improving, again, these are those that I identify that they're working on, on um, changes or upgrades. Why happen? As new or different software features. As you imagine, uh, a, a, uh, if you digital camera that you have come up you want to introduce um, some of that will allow you to stabilize the image. And so the new uh, soft feature that added. Um, or you find that you want to move on to a different processor because it's less expensive or faster or it's more onboard memory or add some, some of these new additional software features. They talked about um, connect capabilities. Now you want to be able to communicate via Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. Um, there are, as you could uh, see through the list, there are other types of uh, um, things that will be over the course of uh, the, the upgrade of the product. <clears throat> the following is uh, here. Mean is important to embedded systems developers. Well, number one is real time capability. If Microsoft Word running on a PC or a laptop, that they get around to inserting the features it can, it might be hard in real time need. You must bond uh, to this, uh, take a real engine. That's a very good uh, uh, example. Uh, engines. That fuel injection now on an engine control unit. 
despite the distance to allow our car to, to drive. That is real time need that you had spark happen at a certain uh, at a certain frequency in order to car running efficiently. And, and uh, there's out there that will need that real time capability. Your signal processing, a good example is your mobile phone. Everything's uh, being transmitted now via digital and yours has to be processed to a digital signal to be tra transmitted the airways and gets the uh, um, the voice signals to be able to uh, play back on your phone. Of course that comes in digital and has, has to be uh, into an analog Form so you can hear it on your speaker. You can see hacking analog, uh, wireless GUIs, etc. <clears throat> so, how do these embedded systems communicate via wireless? Predominantly, it is Wi Fi, and with the Internet of Things coming up, Wi Fi becoming a very ubiquitous, expensive uh, uh, for communication is increasing in popularity. You could see there is important, and of course, you know, mobiles have that capability. There are other devices like, like uh, here that may, may be this there as well. Um, you may have uh, snack machines that are via cellular that are transmitting uh, requests from headquarters saying, I'm running a particular type of snack, have somebody come in and put that machine. I have uh, um, that that, uh, that indicates cellular cellularly as well uh, that is used as a piece of medical equipment. Different types of, of uh, communities calls that are becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, Zigbee, uh, the new uh, Bluetooth is uh, getting more and more uh, integrated. As Looks a little bit different. So, if you're going to work on an embedded systems project, how many people will be on your, your project team? So, uh, as you can see here, the numbers pretty much somewhere between 14, 14 and a half people. Come back to somebody want that, or are you just stretching? Okay, no question, stretching. I'm gonna, actually I'm going to break in a few minutes and uh, and ask some questions. So, so you can hold questions for a couple uh, couple more minutes, and then we'll uh, take some intermediate questions. So let's people working on a embedded system team. An example of the smoke alarm that I told you about for the company called Halo. About three firmware engineers and and, uh, and then three three and a half. Other engineers, maybe some sort of test environment, uh, or maybe even developing application uh, GUIs. Uh, three hardware engineers and uh, to have test engineers. There who will help with the integration of hardware and software, and then some other engineers that might have to be involved. For example, for uh, uh, there's a, a uh, the CSA in Canada, you uh, under or in the U.S. Uh, that are required if you're going to be um, develop products that you have done into a power system. And so, when embedded systems company works on projects, uh, by that about 60% of the, the cost. Sources. In other words, people working on it and uh, tools will be with software and about percent associated with hardware. If you are, what is better to understand more software or hardware if you want to work in this field, apparent that uh, they will need more people working on the software than the hardware. And I only that increasing over the years. And 
companies usually are own hardware components inside with their own hardware engineers rather than buying it from an outside organization. And it's 50 do you start your current embed online with the development? Now, I've seen there are lots of companies out there, Texas Instruments, uh, Russ, uh, Mario, any ST Micro, any one of the organizations that might work with our boards, ARM Corps, um, they are what we call a development board option or evaluation boards for allowing uh, software engineers to start working with the Hartley while engineers are developing the final uh, electric board that will be put in their, their particular product. So I was working with Ericsson that our first uh, development board boards was for a whole phone was here's about uh, 30 centimeters wide, 30 high, you know, was of course uh, relatively uh, thin, but was the platform for a CDMA phone and oh, it had one of the old classical handsets that you might see with a uh, uh, um, with a ringer phone. Because uh, what you do is to start practicing working on developing software for their particular CDMA chip, and while developing your own smaller board for the phone itself. Uh, important is how long uh, to do your, your typical embedded system. And if you if you uh, look at this, almost of the embedded systems are 12 months or less. It's very unusual nowadays for projects to be very, very long. For the whole, you make more money if you're the first to market. And so to Two months between the identification of your customer and the delivery of of your device, you want to um, be as short as possible so you can make as much income as fast as possible and beat all your competitors to market. And uh, everyone wants to be ahead of schedule or on schedule, but if most projects are late. And in fact, are so late that they're finished. The most important slide in this entire deck. People say, well, what kind of programming skills do I need for embedded systems? And look at this. If you have a, a good basis of C and C++, you are developing or you have skills to work Look at that, 85% of the embedded systems projects going on that are currently being developed. What is hell? Everything that Java is wonderful and, uh, and assembly gives you the most control, but fewer and fewer uh, embedded systems projects are being developed with assembly language. So much that many US universities no longer teach assembly language programming because nobody more. You can get the same functionality out of C than out of assembly language. Types of uh, fast development environments like LabVIEW and MATLAB uh, have come and gone over the years. Uh, but they're very interesting to see will, will be the next, or I should say uh, what the 2017 uh, look like because I uh, C will be de-emphasized a little bit. Java will increase a little bit, but uh, AbView and Python might uh, increase as we go. And then for the current and the next project will likely be again about 83% in C 
CE and C++, uh, smattering of all the others, again, assembly language being the size and uh, um, slightly increasing Java, staying pretty stable. The last one. Man, questions going. Oh, what? I think I've gone through my, almost my entire slide deck with uh, with this. I have more breaks in here. So um, let me just a couple more slides, and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, notice organizations will reuse their software. So if the uh, the amount of reuse is seventy seven percent. Versus 40% saying, oh, no, everything is uh, brand new. And know that the people use and develop is, is in house, it is uh, purchased. For example, the operating systems uh, companies will work with. Uh, you can look at Arduino. Arduino uh, um, Android is a good example, it is a, uh, an open source. Operating system, or for that matter, uh, Linux, that people reuse. But versions or some variants sell uh, say uh, their own operating system. That would be uh, purchase code. Software hardware tools do you use? Note anybody who is developing embedded systems is using a debugger. But also note that having Good oscilloscope and mixed signal scope skills are important. Remember, this is looking at software and hardware. So, doing in that system means that you will be hardware to software, or I'm sorry, using the software to make the harder do what you do. And sometimes that means that you have to snap hardware lines to see uh, what is going on with these hardware lines. And again, is using compilers. Uh, there are types of interface tools, uh, like JAGs and letters, development that may be needed for uh, developing your systems application. Other uh, slides are available for your instructor, uh, and he will here to make them available. Post them on. Sites, but available on my own website. Well, that is uh, all I have for this, this particular part. Um, the slides of this presentation uh, I'll cover in a later um, session, but I give you a flavor of, of the motivation of embedded systems. While looking at this, what are you going to go forward and, uh, and do? So I want to uh, open it up for, for a few questions, and then I'm going to introduce a few more embedded systems tools that I uh, have available for you to use. So, you have... elaborate on your project. You earlier you are working on some current project and your future project. Okay, um, I could that. And, and I'll ask, are there any questions about these slides? Because then I'll shut these slides down and I'll open up uh, some pages that will let you see uh, pictures of my project. You have to the slide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Job by I'll, I'll uh, mention one last. Uh, Less uh, discussion about uh, Indians coming to the United States and staying. I um, and, uh, with that, I'll have to close this application. Um, so what I mean uh, more specifically, and uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to. to Up, yeah, you can see what's um, um, uh, 
uh, this is my web page. I see uh, my, my picture. Right here. Yes. And on page, uh, I have information about uh, the classes that I teach and my uh, current and graduate students and my research topics. So I'm going to uh, uh, poke out these so that you can see it. First question I had from people is research topics. So um, some that I have going on. On. Ooh, look at this. I thought I'd fix this already. Um, the general area of embedded systems as uh, well as autonomous robots. So uh, I have a good example is this vehicle right here is a uh, an all vehicle, often something we call a four wheeler. And if you look here on this, I have uh, on the front, I have what's called a LIDAR. So this light able to detect um, obstacles in front. I have uh, several uh, pieces of equipment hanging off, extra batteries for running this uh, equipment. So a vehicle can drive autonomously and um, avoid obstacles. Since it is an all-terrain vehicle, it's designed to go in rougher terrain, like like in, like in uh, forests, off roads, etc. Um, I'm with the vehicle to allow it to, um, let's say, a soldier through the woods and the sun has vehicle follow him uh, wooding um, hundreds of uh, equipment. So soldier doesn't have to carry all that uh, equipment and load. Um, and this is how I'll, I'll call my Zapatabon. And <clears throat> also, uh, uh, um, Zapatabon is the uh, video. And let's see if I can actually pull up the video. So I think you can see this uh, people driving in our, in our parking lot. So the first step of autonomy is to be able to drive it with a remote control device before we're, we're autonomous. enough of that. Some of the other uh, uh, vehicles that I'm uh, or devices I'm working with include flying robotic vehicles. Uh, what we're is that will you to, to um, have quad rotors or these uh, autonomous aeronautical vehicles uh, with each and or in uh, 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 with uh, radiant hearted uh, uh, um, oh, in fact um, one of the, uh, 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 these flying quad uh, quad road and it is tethered to a a ground-based robotic vehicle that is um, driven around so that the, um, if you're uh, in a new plant, um, you're just flying vehicle to get lost somewhere in the nuclear power plant, uh, you so that it could, uh, um, so that you have it inspect certain areas where uh, people can't go, go into. All right, think about some of the projects that I'm working on, right? Um, a little bit, I was 
uh, talking about uh, graduate students. Uh, so right now I have uh, two PhD students who will graduate this semester. Uh, I guess we will graduate a little bit later. I have a lot of other students, notice lots of Indian flags there, who are graduating in the next couple of uh, uh, next year. But I have uh, 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 graduates who came from India. They uh, worked in, uh, they, they got their degree here, and now they're working somewhere in the U.S. Uh, as engineers, I have several, for example, who are working at the MathWorks in Boston. Uh, and then at, uh, or uh, these uh, students are working everywhere from uh, HughesNet. Uh, there's a company called Sealed, Sealed Air here in town that several people met. Uh, everything from Bruce to XR. Actually, several working in town were a Bank of America, etc. So, a lot of students in uh, India who are learning all about uh, um, systems and then uh, really nice paying jobs in the U.S. Uh, I understand there are a lot of there's a lot more opportunity in embedded systems in the U.S. than there is in the There is a thing I want to show on my uh, on my page, and this, uh, under here is something called classes that Dr. Conrad teaches. So if you're to this, um, in particular, there's a uh, uh, systems course, and lots of lots of resources here. In particular, up to this area called notes, YouTube videos. You will um, have uh, entire books uh, from us that you can go up and, and, and view. You can uh, look here at the Rec 63N book. Also, so I put three versions of my embedded systems courses that have been uh, recorded and, and made up to you to view any time. So if you look through uh, my syllabus, uh, today I went through the um, notes of friends, and these were the uh, uh, these notes that you looked at today. So you can even go to my website and pull down those particular notes. There, um, there are other here, and then uh, uh, I start getting into the videos of um, different steps. Uh, for example, there is a YouTube video on the the, uh, the uh, process, and it's uh, it's organization, which I recommend uh, instead of me giving a talk next week, I'm going to read that uh, your teacher shows you that, or maybe you could watch it in your own time to see uh, what the what architecture is like. Many many. Uh, uh, and uh, that you, uh, every from software engineering uh, to teach to software testing, uh, communications, use timers, ups, uh, systems, and uh, and systems engineering. So. Information that I have uh, uh, for today. Do you have any further any other questions? Uh, the next post. Uh, uh, the next post. Okay. Now the uh, the of
So I probably say all that I do is I talk about the introduction to embedded system, just all on the uh, the, the right thing uh, um, with respect to the topics for the next couple of weeks. You want me an introduction, or do you have that uh, already? Yeah, you start with introduction. Okay, so I will with introduction. Find that I will uh, I need to um, share the uh, uh, application. Another one. All right, I see this slide right now. And uh, these are available on my website. So I guess you have systems. I've uh, talked to you about people who work in embedded systems. I guess the, uh, the next we look at embedded systems, specifically with respect of you know why is such a, a big business. And the reason for this is that it's it's an application specific computer system that is just part of a larger device. A good example would be an automobile. The funny of an automobile is literally to get you and other people from location to another. And the systems or the microprocessors and microcontrollers inside your automobile are there for a reason. It is there to a lot to automobile to work more efficiently, to uh, less expensive, to have other features and reality that uh, make it safer to drive, make it more enjoyable to drive. So let's look at these applications and uh, and, and look at a little bit more, more detail. Um, embedded uh, systems together in a network to, uh, to talk with each other to be able to run efficiently and have lower parts costs, greater reliability. Again, looking at the automobile as an example, and are multiple microprocessors inside of it, at least in the uh, in the realm of U.S. automobiles and, and also Indian automobiles as well. Um, if, uh, most Indian vehicles being sold today have airbags. Is that correct? correct? Yeah. Yes. And airbags. Embedded systems associated with it. The systems are measuring accelerometers for a, a, a acceleration and a quick deceleration. It's actively the, uh, the air to inflate to keep you from hitting the dashboard, to keep you from hitting the steering wheel, uh, and to protect you in case of an accident. Well. The, the accelerometer and the uh, and the process controlling the, the airbag may be different areas of the vehicle, and so that would have to be an embedded work that uh, also tied into the automobile engine control unit that is detect how and when to deploy the airbag. And looking at our automobile as an example. Is have reduced cost, functionality, better performance, better safety, and then um, mobile uh, additional creature comforts that uh, you might enjoy. Uh, your radio inside of an mobile. Um, you have uh, um, serious music. Radio. And uh, in that is used uh, by many people, but people and getting M and FM signals for radio stations on serious satellite radio. That way, listen to what type of music they want to choose, and they have a choice of uh, hundreds of uh, radio channels. That all 
controlled electronically, and it's all controlled by embedded systems, uh, and that are uh, picking up the signals. Uh, there are digital signal processing uh, uh, embedded that will be able to um, that digital signal the analog, which then will be transmitted over your speakers. The uh, has an automobile that uh, it's about three years old, approach four years old, and that tells my it's time for her to take the car for its annual maintenance and annual maintenance she drives uh, uh, this would be um, 12 miles do the conversion uh, in kilometers that's somewhere around 20,000 uh, kilometers or so and the OBL has embedded systems which is detecting the, uh, the velocity of the oil the temperature of all of the systems as they run how uh, much air is being pulled into the engine for uh, combustion? In um, fact, if there, there are in air filter, if the oil is dirty or not, and, and that you know it's about 12 months between you know, the, the vehicle in and now. It's uh, it's time you to just get annual maintenance. There's nothing wrong. Good to change the oil every so. Often, and these embedded system have this wonderful dependency of this vehicle that doesn't break down ever. Uh, and the uh, purpose of it is such that I'm not spending time take to be uh, repaired every so often. Much different than if you think, you know, uh, from since I'm a little bit older than you. Fifty years ago, you would have to take your uh, automobile in every 5,000 kilometers for a uh, change of oil, and now you no longer need to do that. You can you can go a thousand miles for it because you are said I'm operating. And I don't need any maintenance. Cost for uh, for your that automobile, and because of that. And the systems that you put in there, actually finding that the cost of vehicles are pretty much down over the years rather than increasing. Now, uh, all different areas in an automobile that you're reducing these costs. Investments are compensating for poor signal quality. If you have a CAN bus network a vehicle, uh, you have running all throughout as a, a as a network and you do these big huge wiring harnesses that they needed to pass start going, as I mentioned because you're not changing your your, uh, your oil and, uh, and of course uh, oh, another good example is um, they have air pressure sensors in your tires tell you what happened you got it you know, some other device and you're, it's time to get that service, and and, uh, and you need to place or just repair it. Screws, controls, airbags, power seats, your lights, and automation, uh, as well as entertainment that you have. Parts, examples of uh, embedded in your in your vehicle. You all have all of the uh, other devices that you might carry. Like your mobile phone will now communicate uh, via Bluetooth with your speakers. And so that's today, anywhere between 40 and 200 processors in your typical vehicle. Now, is the big embedded system functionality? Literally, looking um, systems having. Itself with and um, fire the, the or whatever uh, controls are are needed. And if you have an automobile, it can analyze fusion is running when it's uh, cold, 
when it or even it is overheating or I don't know. The systems control, you're less aware on the mechanical systems as well. So what an embedded system? Well, first of all, as you mentioned earlier, is an embedded system is part of a of a device that maybe historically was more uh, mechanically based. But it has a simple than a full keyboard that you're used to. So nothing more than a push button or a couple of sensors that are detecting uh, a motor. The systems that we saw from the slide earlier are be hard real time. Or they can be real time, but uh, not, not constrained on Hard real time. Hard real time meaning, for example, the engine uh, igniting the fuel cylinder, as it will cause mechanical damage. And another aspect that you're typically going to expect it to operate independently without software upgrade for years, even ever. So um, have a digital watch may not be an Apple this one but have simpler digital watches with a simple display yeah a couple all right um, have you ever code a digital watch You expensive digital watch, your uh, um, your thousand rupee uh, digital watch in the local store, and, and you have this watch and use it for many, many, many years with that new store. Embedded systems typically operate without having us or resetting or, or new software downloaded. Another example, uh, I believe camera. Showing the class from where you are, right? Or is that a, or is that a laptop that's showing? You? It's a camera. Oh, well, the camera going to get a new version of software? Embedded system, and so uh, it would typically something that will be programmed in the factory and never change. And indicative of an embedded system. So you think about that. That means that uh, the embedded system software the device needs to be as bug free as possible. Uh, it can't be for a laptop or soft operating system, right? Uh, to update them all the time because uh, bugs and they have the bugs all the time. But, but the uh, uh, egg microprocessor <laughs> again. We'll always be uh, we'll factored that way. will always, always be there. The system design can be everything from uh, cost, power, and in environments that it lives in. So let's take a look at this system that everybody has in your pocket, right? iPhone, probably. Um, and uh, with this device, it's a constraint. Well, battery in here. So, uh, I need to, uh, where I run, I need to make sure that, uh, and this is a good example. You notice that my phone is, it's what, dark, right? All right, it power. So what it is, it turned off the screen when being used to save power. If I want to activate it, yeah, that's me. Uh, uh, let's see if you can see that. Me with uh, my, uh, my my friend. And, you know, I always uh, to activate it, it will turn on the screen, which, which obviously draws more. 
more power. Apple uh, of mobile phone. Um, do you think really checking the radio for see if a phone call is coming in? So is, uh, is mobile phone? How does it know when it when a call is coming in? Is it always out there listening for a call? Rating 100% of the time. Listen. Do I have a call? No, 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 no. So, EDMA, uh, what hat? The phone will, will, will turn on. It will radio. It will listen for, um, for a Slot. If, if it uh, is a call coming, and if it will go to sleep for a second, and so happening is over the course of a second, 1.024 seconds, the will, will turn, and the radio is drawing anywhere between uh, uh, 50 and 200 milliamps. So it's quite a bit of energy. Energy to turn on the radio to listen to the base station, and we'll uh, we'll say uh, a uh, uh, phone number, Jim Conrad. Uh, I have nothing for you, and the phone, the Jim Conrad will will send a message back saying, "Okay, here." So, and then the phone uh, radio will turn on. Off and it will go to sleep for a second. And how much energy then it could save by not having 5200 amps of a, re, or I'm sorry, of a radio running all the time. And so that's an example of the constraint of power and energy. And there's a trade-off. So to wait one second come in and it's a lot longer battery power available on mobile phone. That's, you know, hard environments. In automobiles, an extremely harsh environment. Uh, that is distance. And, uh, you know, this is a relatively small phone that I have an extremely big case on uh, environment. Um, but the weight of an embedded system is, is uh, important too. And uh, have another system here that I could pull over as well. Now, pull it up. This is an example of a small embedded systems development board. This is called the Renaissance Sakura. It's based on 63N microcontroller. And in our Duino issue, it has the same uh, layout as, as our Duinos do. But it's a more, more, so if you look at this, it has uh, basically one leg of flash memory, of memory, and a K of RAM. It's better than your typical Arduino Uno or, or Duino or uh, one of the other Arduino boards that are available. It also has Ethernet ports built into it. Uh, a bit, these were uh, uh, manufactured in, in uh, and unfortunately, uh, they're a little harder to get a hold of now because um, they were popular, and I think they're only now sold in Japan. And this next introduction here is, is uh, a specific um, computer. Typically, are, are uh, built into larger systems. They have additional functionality with constraints, and the embedded system engineer will have to weigh the different constraints for an embedded system uh, to see if um, for low cost or uh, uh, functionality or weight or uh, rugged. 
some uh, references. Is uh, I believe all I have for for to do you have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? All right. With I stop this recording.